but nobody knows, so they are going into different direction. If you go out and stand on the this um, footpath and all, and when you see, half the city is going on one direction with full speed and this, and the other half is going in the other direction. And both of them are seeking happiness. The one who has left that place seeking happiness here, and this fellow leaves this place seeking happiness there. Everyone feels that happiness is not here, it is out there somewhere. Ignorant person is one who feels happiness is in future. Happiness is in some other place, and in some other time, and in some other object, and in some other person. A spiritual seeker, if he knows that the happiness is not out there, but it is in that self only. So all other desire, with proper understanding, gets dropped. Chhod jata. So vinivrutta kamaha, one who is free from all these uh, desires. Dvandvair vimuktaha. Bhagavan says, one who is free from dvandva. Dvandva is another term which is used many times in Gita and other scriptures also. Dvandva means pairs which go together. Generally it is translated as pairs of opposite. They need not be opposite, but they go together. Like joy and sorrow go together. Where there is joy, there is sorrow. Where there is sorrow, there is joy. They go together. They are like brother and sisters. They are like together they go. They are like two sides of the same coin. Okay, that is better. So brother and sister also don't go together. <laughs> two sides of the same coin. Hmm? Not counterfeit coin. Huh? Real coin. So, the, uh, when I say I am very happy and all, in that happiness itself lies the root of some sorrow also. Thoda sa, idhar udhar hone se thoda sorrow bhi ho jata hai. Then things get okay, then again their joy comes. They go together. Then uh, this uh, gain and loss, they also go together. Gain and loss, paap and punya, raga and dvesha, Sukha and Dukha, they are, they are the Dvandva. So the world is experience and whatever we experience, that experience has got different degrees. So those degrees are called Dvandva. So if I experience happiness, there is less of happiness, that less of happiness is called sorrow. If I experience great, uh, what you call, mana, uh, recognition or uh, sanman, what you call, honor. Then little less of honor is called dishonor. For a person who is experiencing an honor, this will become dishonor. For one who is here, this much will be, will be great honor for him. Hmm? In shadi ke dino mein bhi, people they get uh, all irritated and nervous and they get uh, annoyed and all because that man, apman, samman, it becomes more vivid there. All sorts of things come because each one has got their own definition. Forget our Shadi Vya, even a lot of these uh, um, religious heads or religious people also when they meet, then also it is very difficult. Kisko jada man dena hai, kisko upar ki seed deni chahiye, kisko niche ki. That also can create a lot of gadbad. In the Kumbha Mela also, lot of things happen when they are not properly followed. So man, apman, lab, hani, jay, parajay, raga, dvesha, uh, what you call, papa, punya, sukha, dukha, they are called dvandva, they go together. We experience the world, like that. And we, uh, we are attached to one thing and we dislike another thing. Bhagwan says, a seeker should try to look at both of them in the equal vision. Should look at sorrow and joy equally. 
should become free of insistence on joy, then he becomes free of that sorrow also. And when we become free of this uh, joy and sorrow, this dvandva, we become, we, are, we become available to recognize the truth. See, these are very interesting points. And one uh, contemplates and uh, uses this thing for one sadhana, then it will be very nice. When we sit for meditation, what prevents us from going deep within? Our this dvandva only. When some thoughts come, either we like it or we dislike it. Either we feel happy with it or we feel sad with it. So either way, we get stuck with those thoughts. We get stuck with our friends and we get stuck with our enemies. So if we want to go beyond the thoughts, you should go beyond this concept of friend and enemy, beyond the concept of joy and sorrow then we will be able to go beyond these thoughts. So therefore here Bhagavan says, Dvandvair Vimuktaha. This term was used in the second chapter also, where Bhagavan talked about uh, Vedas. Traigunya Vishaya Vedaha Nistraigunya Bhavarjuna Nirdvandvaha Nitya Sattvastaha Nir Yoga Kshema Atmavan he says that uh, this, all these Vedas talk about the three gunas. Hey Arjuna, you go beyond these three gunas. How? Nir dvandvaha, become free of this dvandva. But how? He says you establish yourself into sattva gun. When we encourage and invoke more and more sattva gun, we become free of this dvandva. Person who is established in sattva gun, will look at both joy and sorrow with equal vision, will look at success and failure with equal vision. It's like a per, uh, when you play with little children, for little children that victory and defeat becomes very important, but for elders it doesn't matter. Chalo, aapko jitna hai, aap jit lo. You want to do this. For them, they become equal in the dvandva. For them, the victory and defeat is same. So, dvandvair vimuktaha. And Bhagavan gives example of this dvandva. Sukha dukha sanyayi. Uh, named as sukha and dukha. For example, sukha and dukha. Sukha is happiness, dukha is sorrow. This is also dvandva. Joy or sukha means pleasure and pain. Or joy and sorrow. The dvandva. And it is with respect to the mind, the state of the mind. So this pleasure and sorrow is experienced according to the state of the mind. And when we get attached to the pleasure, we get attached to the state of the mind. And when we are attached to the state of the mind, we are stuck in this prakriti only, in the samsara. So Bhagavan tells the seeker that become free of this dvandva, then you will be able to or recognize your own self. See, like those horses, uh, especially those uh, those Ghoda Gadi Wale and all those, in the cities and all, they put those, uh, what do Blinkers. Blinkers on their eyes. So that they don't, don't get distracted by the traffic around them. They only see in front and keep walking in front. But when they get distracted, they can't go any forward. Similarly, this dvandva distracts the seeker. So when he shifts his attention from everywhere and focuses on the Supreme, then he can just uh, attain that. So dvandvair vimoktaha sukha dukha sanyehi gachanti amodhaha. Such person who has got these five qualities, nirmana moha, Jita Sangha Dosha, Adhyatma Nitya, Vinivritta Kama, and Dvandvayar Vimuktaha. Such seekers are called Amodhaha. They have become free of their delusion, become free of their foolishness. They have found their way. And such seekers, they attain that supreme Pada. Padam Avvayam Tat Gachanti. They attain that state of enlightenment, 
they attain the state of realization, which is the goal indicated. Now, what is that Pada? What is so special about it? Why can't you tell about it in detail? So that is being now indicated in the next verse. Natad bhāsayate suryaha Nashashanko na pavakaha Yadgatvāna nivartante Taddhāma paramam mama Natad bhāsayate suryaha Nashashanko na pavakaha Uh, tad, tad padam, that pada which was indicated in the previous verse, that state of enlightenment, which is, the, which is that Brahma alone, one who knows that Brahma becomes that Brahma. So that Brahma or that supreme reality, what is it? Where is it? What is that state? Bhagavan says it's very difficult to comprehend it because it is not illumined by the sun. Natad bhasayate suryaha. Even the sun, which is so powerful, which illumines the entire world, it cannot illumine that, that place. Many people try to seek heaven or that great Brahma Lok and all in this cosmos only. But whatever is illumined by the stars and all, is not that place because it cannot be illumined by any stars. It cannot be illumined by the sun. Oh, then it must be something at night. Maybe the moon can illumine it. Says no. Na shashankaha. Moon is called shashanka because it has got shasha. That uh, uh, rabbit. So shashanka also cannot illumine the that pada. Then maybe the fire can illuminate. He says no, na pavakaha. It cannot be illumined by the fire also. Yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama paramamama. That is the dhama. Is Bhagwan said that is my place, that is my abode, that is my home, that is my house. But it cannot be seen by the sun. It is not illumined by the moon. It is not illumined by the Fire also. See, one meaning is this, but another is this. All these three, they are the presiding deities of our sense organs and mind and all. So, Surya is the presiding deity of our eyes. Adishthana Devata is called. See, we have these five senses, and each of these senses, they have their presiding deities mentioned in the scriptures. But these presiding deities are like sun, represents light. So for eyes, light is required. Without light, the eyes cannot see. Just because I have eyes, I will see, doesn't, it is not. Outside the help is required, light is required. Again, the presiding deity of the mind is the, is the moon. Even the great Rishi Munis, they found out that the mind, the devata of that mind is the moon. One is that if you look at the moon, it constantly changes, constant, there are various phases it goes through. Sometimes it is totally dark, ne? amavasya, and sometimes a bright, in hmm, purnima. Similarly, our mind also goes through these phases, sometimes very bright and hmm, as though it has reached the seventh heaven. After a few days, you say, what happened? I am very low, you know, I am depressed. You know. Why are you so sad? No, he did not smile at me, you know. But that doesn't make you so sad. No, he smiled at the other person. <laughs> so, anyway, the mind is ruled by the moon. Also, we... Found, they found a relationship actually when the 
Purnima is there or uh, Amavasya is there, it affects the moon, it affects the mind. Some people actually become very happy on Purnima, become little sad on Amavasya day and all. So moon is very much connected to human beings. The cycle of the moon is connected to our cycles. So natad bhasate surya nash uh, and Pavaka is the, uh, 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 is the Devata of our speech. Agni is the Devata. Therefore, sometimes we use that term, fiery speech. Fire God is the Devata of speech. Eyes represent all the senses. Mind represents Antakarana, Manabuddhi, Chitta, Hankar. And speech represents all the organs of action. So, by saying that, that great Pada is not illumined by the sun, the moon and the fire, what Bhagwan wants to indicate is that Pada is not illumined by our senses, nor is it illumined by the mind, the intellect, the ahankar and all, nor is it illumined by our speech and our organs of action. With the legs you cannot go there, with the hands you cannot touch it. With the, with the speech, you cannot uh, describe it. All these organs of perception, action, mind, intellect, all of them are limited. They themselves are functioning because of the presence of consciousness. But that consciousness cannot be comprehended by the mind and intellect. Mind, intellect tries to comprehend with the help of feelings and thoughts. Senses try to comprehend through its perception. Speech tries to comprehend by speaking about it, defining it, talking about it. But that truth cannot be comprehended by all this. It can be, one can be the truth. One cannot describe or talk or think about it. I myself am that supreme reality. It cannot be comprehended by any of my senses or the mind or the, in, or the organs of action. So, natad bhasayate suryaha na shashanko na pavakaha yad gatvada nivartante tad dhama paramam mama Bhagavan says, having attained this state, there is no more return into this uh, samsar, into confusion, into sorrow, into pain, into sense of duality into the sense of limitation, there is no more return into it. One comes to attain that and get established in that Supreme Self. So this, uh, these are all, all these shlokas are like, uh, like sutra, they are like aphorisms, they have great depth. So when we contemplate on it, we will come to understand their depth. So therefore Bhagavan, when he indicates this, it means that when we, when we meditate, we should learn to transcend our senses, transcend the mind, the intellect, and be where we are. It is not that we are going from outside to our, our dhamma. We are seated in that dhamma only. We have to recognize that we are where we want to be by shifting our attention from all these outer distractions. Mm. It's like a, what you call, um, sometimes um, you uh, watch a movie and all and you feel you are there, but when you when you focus your attention, you will understand you are not there, but you are seated comfortably in your seat. Similarly, when we use our senses, we feel I am in the senses. When I use my mind, I feel I am in the mind. When I use my intellect, I feel I am in the intellect. When I drop this, all this equipment, I will know where I am. And where I am is the supreme dhar.